Section 3.3, centripetal force. In this section, we're going to learn about the force that is making the object to undergo circular motion. And we're going to talk about different type of forces that we already know that act as a centripetal force. We studied the Newton's laws of motions, and now we have a better understanding of how an object will behave when it is in motion. The natural way is to continue to move in a straight line unless a force acts upon it. We know that a force can accelerate an object by changing its speed or direction or both. Now, in a circular motion, by moving the ball or a bucket in a circle, we apply a force of tension in a wire. This tension keeps the ball in a circular path. So this tension changes the ball direction from the natural way in a straight line into a circular path. So we can say that tension causes centripetal acceleration. So that's why we name that as a centripetal force. It is a, not a new force. It is the same forces that we knew before, tension we knew before, but now since that is causing a certain type of acceleration, we name it as a centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. Now take a look at the picture on the left. Yes, this is true. Cars can drive on a wall. Yes, it is dangerous. Do not try this. However, we're talking about physics and we're trying to explain how is that possible. Because of the inertia, all the objects have a tendency to go in a straight line. If they are moving, have a tendency to move at a straight line. However, the wall is designed to be in a circular path to force those cars to undergo circular motion. So as the cars are trying to go on a straight line, walls is reacting, is pushing back with a normal force that is keeping those cars on a wall. How is that possible? Now, if you take a look, the normal force is a huge, is a reaction force that is pushing the cars toward the center of that curved wall. As a result, normal force will generate static force of friction between tires and the wall. And static force of friction is going to cancel the gravitational force. Now, if the wall is going to react less, the force of static friction is going to be less. How is that possible? If the speed of the car is not fast enough, to generate a certain amount of acceleration and with a mass will generate a certain amount of force and the normal force is going to generate static force of friction. So everything is connected. So that's why when they want to drive at a certain height, they go spiral up. So have to keep the speed in order to reach to that point. And if they slow down, that is going to be dangerous because static force of friction is not going to be strong enough to hold that car on the wall. Now, passengers in a car that are going around a sharp curve at a high speed will experience that strong for force pushing them toward the center of the curve. As we said, this force keeps the passenger in a circular path with the cars, obviously. The normal force and sometimes force of friction, and we're going to talk about that later on, can cause centripetal acceleration. That centripetal acceleration will cause a centripetal force. And now that force is a normal force or sometimes a force of friction, static force of friction. Now take a look at the diagram on the right. That's a cyclist bended toward that center of that curve. And you see that ground is banked. It's not horizontal, has a certain angle. And that is not a surprise. And we're going to talk about that later on. 
But if you see that ground is going to push at a certain angle to cancel the gravitational force, which is the green one, and to give a certain component or a force toward the center of that curve, that component will make the cyclist easily, comfortably to turn the curve. So that is the component of normal force or a component of the ground that is acting on the tires of that bicycle. With the force of friction, obviously, but we're talking about a normal force for now. We already know from first Newton law or law of inertia that if object is moving, have a natural tendency to move in a straight line unless a force is acting upon it. Planets orbiting the sun will experience a strong force pushing them toward the center of the orbit, so they are not moving in a straight line. The force keeps the planet in a circular path. The same is for satellite, natural or artificial, that orbit the Earth. So there is a force that is acting upon them so they can force them to accelerate or to move in a circular path. And that force is gravitational force. Gravitational force cause centripetal acceleration. And that's why we name it in this case as a centripetal force. As a conclusion, F net that is causing centripetal acceleration is called centripetal force or symbol is FC. Without it, the object cannot move in a uniform circular motion. But how can we calculate it? From second Newton law, we know the force is equal to mass time acceleration. So we know the acceleration, which is a centripetal acceleration, is equal to V squared over R. Now we can calculate centripetal force, which is M V squared over R. Centripetal acceleration is directed toward the center, centri pedal seeking, centri seeking force is directed to a center as well. So centripetal force must also be directed toward center of the circle. Let's do a practice with a centripetal acceleration and centripetal force. Suppose a bug is sitting on edge of the DVD with a radius of six centimeter. The DVD is spinning such that a bug with a mass of five gram travels around its circular path three times per second, three cycles per second. Calculate centripetal acceleration of the bug. So since that here, what we have is a radius, we change it in a standard unit, six times 10 in power of negative two meter. We have mass, five times 10 in power of negative three kilogram. Again, we change it to a standard, we convert it into a standard unit. And frequency is a three cycle per unit of time, which is per second, is a three hertz. So in order to calculate centripetal acceleration and frequency is involved, we have a special formula that we already uh, derived in a previous lesson, which is four pi square r f square. Then we have everything that you need to calculate centripetal acceleration, and then we got 21.3 meter per second. Now calculate net force on a bug. In order for the bug to undergo circular motion, the force has to act on it to make it to accelerate. And obviously the static force of friction between a disc and the bug will make it to happen. It will make the bug to not fly away because of the inertia. So what do we have in a free body diagram? We have force of gravity, we have a normal force, and we have a force that is forcing it, that bug to undergo circular motion. So that is very clear. It is a centripetal force and centripetal force is mass time acceleration, which we can calculate 
uh, already uh, by multiplying mass time centripetal acceleration. Centripetal force is equal to 0 0.11 Newton. You can try this experiment at home. If you have an object that is tied to a string, spin in a circular motion in the air, the force exerted by a string has a horizontal and vertical components. So that would not look like this unless that object is on a surface, like you're holding on a surface. However, if that is an air, that would look pretty much like this with a horizontal and vertical component. The vertical component is equal and opposite to a gravitational force. And that would look pretty much like this. So that vertical component is going to cancel gravity. So that is going to make that object float in the air. And a horizontal component or a net force, which is directed toward the center of the circle, is perpendicular to that force. Why is that net force, by the way? Because in the free body diagram, you're going to see that component of the string is going to cancel by gravity. The only that is left is a FC. Let's do a practice problem. A rock tied to a string spins in a circle of a radius 1.5 meter as shown. The speed of the rock is 10 meter per second. A, draw a simple diagram that shows a top view and draw a free body diagram for a rock. Here's a top view when you see a circle and the velocity is tangent to that circle and the centripetal force is pointed toward center. This is free body diagram and you see that tension on that string can be uh, split into component, x component, which is a centripetal force and y component is that that cancel of gravity that uh, makes the ball to float on air. Apply Newton's second law along the vertical and horizontal direction to calculate the angle the string makes with the horizontal. So what we're looking is uh, we have a radius 1.5, speed 10 meter per second. We're looking at the angle theta. So angle theta on that triangle, if you take a look, is the um, has an opposite, which is a FTY, and has adjacent, which is FC. So FTY over FC. So a theta is 10 negative 1 of opposite over adjacent. So FTY over FTX. So FTY is equal to force of gravity and FTX is equal to centripetal force. Now we are ready to um, solve for uh, theta is tan negative one of mg, which is a force of gravity, over mv squared over r, which is a centripetal force. Now m and m cancel, and what we are left here is tan negative one of gr over v squared. Now we have everything. You plug those numbers in calculator and we can find the angle theta is 8.36 degree. Now, out of curiosity, what will happen to the object that undergoes circular motion and the force that is responsible to force that object undergoing that circular path vanishes? So if you have a ball that uh, undergoes circular motion and string breaks, what will happen to the ball depends on what position at what moment is the ball when a string breaks. For example, if the ball is at a position A, then you're going to see that ball will go straight up tangent to itself. If the ball goes at a point B, when the string breaks, then it's going to be again in a tangent 
is going to move at a tangent to that uh, circle again. However, now the gravity is going to make that ball to undergo through a parabolic path. We learned already in a projectile motion how the gravity is going to affect the trajectory of the object. So it is similar to a projectile motion. However, if that happened in deep space when there's no gravity acting, at any position in that circle, if the string breaks, always, always, the ball will go in a straight line tangent to the uh, point, tangent to that circle. So if the spring breaks, that ball or yo-yo will move along the straight line obeying the first Newton law because there is no external force acting on a ball to make it otherwise. There is a video that I chose for you guys to watch it. I'm going to post that link on the bottom of the, this video so you can watch and have more information about centripetal forces. Here are some more practice problems. A roller coaster car is at the lowest point on its circular truck. The radius of curvature is 22 meters. The apparent weight of one of the passengers is three times her true weight. Determine the speed of the roller coaster. Okay, so what we have here is a radius 22, normal force is three times the force of gravity, and speed is required. We draw a force free body diagram, force of gravity, normal force. Normal force is longer because it's three times bigger than force of gravity. Now we have a centripetal acceleration pointing up. Why? Because it is already given here. It's at the lowest point. So this passenger here is at the lowest point of the curvature. So circular path. So always centripetal acceleration is pointing toward the center and center is somewhere in here. So that's why it's pointed toward up and that is a positive direction. And we do that, we solve the problem as we have already solved problem in the dynamics. Sum of all forces is equal normal force and a force of gravity. There are just two forces. Normal force is positive and force of gravity is negative. That is equal to MAC. And then we have AC is V squared over R. Normal force is three times the force of gravity and force of gravity is mg. So if you see that we have all m there, they cancel. Then 3g minus g is 2g is equal to v square over r. Then we can solve for v square, which is 2gr. And then we square root it. v is equal square root of 2rg. And then v is equal to times 22 meter times 9.8 meter per second. And that is 21 meter per second. The second one is two kilogram mass attached to the four meter long string is spinning horizontally in a circle on a frictionless surface. It completes five revolution in two seconds. That means five cycles in two seconds. Five divided by two is 2.5. So it's 2.5 revolution per unit of time, which is second. So frequency is 2.5. Calculate the magnitude of the tension in the string. There's no air resistance. So what do we have? Mass is 2 kilogram, radius is 4, frequency is 2.5, and the centripetal force is required. We know that acceleration is equal 4 pi square r f square. So now we know that mass time acceleration makes centripetal force, which is 4 m pi square r f square. Then we can have 4 pi square times 2 kilogram times radius, which is 4. And then 2.5 hertz in a square that will give you 1,974 Newton. And that's the answer. This is a typical problem in a circular motion.
this is typical, involve centripetal force, which is a combination of the component of the normal force and component of the static force of friction that makes possible for the car to turn curves. Here it is. A car making a turn on a dry banked highway ramp is experiencing friction. The coefficient of static friction between the tires and a road is 0.6. Determine the maximum speed at which the car can safely negotiate a turn of the radius of 2 times 10 in power of 2 meter with a banking angle of 20 degree. So what we have here is a coefficient of friction, static friction is 0.60, radius is 200 meter or 2 times 10 in power of 2 meter, and the angle is 20 degree. Speed is required. It is a very long uh, solution, so I want you to be patient on this one. And uh, I recommend that you can have a piece of paper and grab a calculator, uh, grab a pencil, and try to solve the problem with me. It is very useful if you do that. Okay, let's start by drawing a free body diagram with the x-axis still horizontal, although we see that is inclined plane. That is the only option that you have to draw x-axis horizontally because that's how centripetal force act on. It is acting horizontally and is pointing toward the center of that curvature. So free body diagram, we can draw uh, X and Y axis and the car, which is the object in the middle. So next one uh, is uh, drawing forces that is acting. So it's a force of normal force, static force of friction and force of gravity. So force of gravity, normal force and static force of friction. And I draw that in a way uh, considering that uh, normal force is perpendicular to that surface and static force of friction is along that surface is pointing toward the center toward that uh, where the curvature uh, it has a center but is along the surface so it does have the angle 20 degree with the horizontal because it's a banked uh, ramp okay so, uh, next step would be, since that uh, normal force is not on X and not on Y, you can solve it, resolve it in two components, F and Y and F and X. We do the same thing for static force of friction. So, F, S, X and F, S, Y. And we know the direction of the centripetal acceleration. It is horizontally along the X axis and is pointing toward the center of that curvature. If you see that the curvature is like this, it's pointing like this. So that means that center is somewhere here. So that means if the car is here, the center is going to be somewhere here. It's like a 200 meter away from that car. So next step, what would be? On a y axis, there is an equilibrium. So F net is zero because car is not moving up or down. That's normal. So that means is sum of all forces on a Y axis is zero. That means F N Y plus F S Y plus F G is equal to zero. So if you see F N is up and F G and F S Y is down. So we can keep it traditionally up is positive and down is negative. FNY is positive, FSY and FG is negative, that is equal to zero. And then we can say we can find the component. FNY is equal to FN cosine theta. Why? Because if you see the angle theta here, that FNY is adjacent, is beside that angle. So this would be sine and this will be cosine. The same thing is for uh, for the Fs 
and we solve it, resolve it into component. Fsy is in the front of angle, that means is sine, and Fg is along the y-axis, negative, so that is equal to zero. So we took care of all signs and we resolve all components. We found all components of the forces. Now we are ready to solve for Fn. And I'm going to tell you why did we solve for Fn, because we needed to, uh, because we, we don't know the Fn, and we have to replace it what Fn is equal to. And you're going to see that even the mass of the car is not needed. So Fn cosine theta minus mu s sine theta is equal to mg. And we can solve for Fn, which is mg divided by cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. So next one. So in order to solve for Fn, we factor Fn. So what is left there is a cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. So Fn mu s was Fs. You know, the force of static friction is equal to Fn times mu s. Then we factor Fn. And then we can solve for Fn. And Fn is equal to mg divided by cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. Now let's uh, focus our attention to x-axis. On x-axis, there is an acceleration. So sum of all forces is equal to mac. It is an accelerated motion because a uniform circular motion is a uniform accelerated motion. OK, so then sum of all forces, which is a centripetal force, is equal to mac, which is ac is a centripetal acceleration. That means what is on an x-axis is an x component of a normal force and x component of static force of friction is equal to mac. If you take a look at that from a free body diagram and we chose direction, positive direction at the direction of the acceleration, if you see that x component of normal force and x component of static force of friction are at the both direction, they are positive. So that means that everything is positive on that x-axis, Fnx and Fsx. Then now we can solve those two components. Fnx, we told you already, I told you already that it is this portion here, or this portion here. That means it is in front of angle theta, which we use hypotenuse time sine theta. That's why we have Fn sine theta. For Fsx is adjacent for this angle. So that's hypotenuse, which is Fs, time cosine theta is equal to mac. But remember that we know what um, um, Fs is equal to. Static force of friction is equal to a mu s Fn. So that's why we replace that Fs to a mu s Fn, and that is equal to mac, and that is equal to mv square over r. Then what we do, we factor Fn here, and what is left, we uh, write it in the next equation. So in order to solve for v, we have to factor Fn, as I told you already. So what is left is a sine theta plus mu s cosine theta is equal to m v square over r. But remember that we learn, we solve for Fn on a y-axis, which is Fn was equal to mg divided by cosine theta minus mu s sine theta. So instead of Fn, we don't really know. We replace what we already know, because we know g, we know cosine theta, mu s sine theta. So let's do it. Let's replace what Fn is. And then uh, this is Fn. We just got it. And we have times sine theta plus mu s cosine theta. So that's one. Is equal to mv squared over r. But you see a m and m cancel. 
then what we have is gr so what is left here is a g and we move r on another side of the equation because a gr times sine theta plus mu s cosine theta if you see that on the top and on the bottom is left only this portion which is cosine theta minus mu s sine theta is equal to v square and the last step would be we square root it to find a v and we have square root of gr uh, that multiplies sine theta plus mu s cosine theta that divides cosine theta minus mu s sine theta we have everything to solve it so you plug all the numbers there for uh, g is 9.8 meter per second r is 200 meter sine theta is sine 20 degree plus 0 0.6 is mu s cosine 20 divided by cosine 20 minus 0 0.6 sine 20 if you plug that in the calculator you're going to get 49 meter per second and that is a maximum speed that uh, the car with that condition with those, those tires condition that makes the coefficient of friction to be 0 0.6 between tires and a road can safely barely can make that uh, curve but remember that uh, always uh, you have to have more uh, the, the bigger the coefficient of security when we uh, when we design those um, highways ramps in order to be safe for cars uh, another thing that I want to mention here mass of the car is not mentioned is not required obviously that will make more sense because you cannot design a highway for a specific car that will not make sense in a in an engineering point of view so obviously the mass will not matter no matter what the mass is what matters there is the angle the bang that help and by the way if you never actually thought about this why we make those uh, roads at a certain angle now you know that that angle helps for the car to be safely turning help to negotiate the turn help to stay on a slippery when the road is slippery and the coefficient of friction is not as it should be on a dry weather 0 0.6 is going to be less because it's slippery so that curve that angle on a, that uh, on that highway will help a lot to make a road safer so I am uh, posting uh, the video of the um, circular motion the cars driving on a wall not because I'm supporting it it is dangerous I'm not supporting it I'm not encouraging it I'm telling you the physics works that's only point here is to see that it's possible in a circular motion it is possible something that you may never thought about it but uh, obviously it is not safe and I do not recommend it do not try do not even think about it just learn a physics just learn that is possible in a circular motion so that's about it for uh, section 3.3 centripetal force have a good one